and on September 18th, 2024. I'm your host, Chris Kowal, and today I have with me guest Chip Morningstar, and we're going to dis. We had a conversation the other day <laughs> about uh, our, our various architectural leanings for uh, for the pet demon, and uh, trying to like, figure out where do they fit in each other's visions. Do they do they dovetail? Do they not? We still don't know. But as, as I as I said, my, my uh, I'm still confused. But I'm confused at a higher level of abstraction and about more important things. Yeah. Which is, I think, the question, that, the answer that uh, I think Enrico Fermi gave when testifying to some congressional committee in, in the 1960s about, you know, they'd spent all of this money on building giant particle accelerators. And what do we have to show for it? Um, So, so the the question that I sort of started from was I realized I was confused about so what is a formula in the in the in the in the endodamon world context, um, um, and there are these various abstractions that have words that go with them like uh, agent or um, what was the other one we we flagged? Locator, um, and you know, are the is this just a, is some of these things just a name rotation of things that I'm already familiar with, or are these new uh, ideas? And if they're different, how do they line up with the concepts that kind of I'd already been conjuring with? Where my uh, my baseline model of this world is kind of heavily rooted in or biased by my fairly intimate understanding of the Agoric swing set. And uh, um, and and at least on the surface, uh, the world of Endo seems very different from that. And yet I had gotten the sense from from Chris that that actually no, they're very, very similar. Um, and wanting to understand that. And um, I think the, the the high order piece of that 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 came out that the sort of what I took away from the conversation uh, was um, basically what are the rules for dealing with the notion of sturdy refs versus live refs, which is not really a concept that even exists in swing set, but which is very close to the world that, that Endo deals with. And in fact, will almost certainly have to be very much a part of the world that uh, the OCAP kernel will have to deal with uh, because this, 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 this is intimately tied into the question of how, um, how, the, the tool, whether you're talking about the OCAP kernel or you're talking about um, uh, Endo or some other thing, perhaps uh, some of the things that Sprightly is working on, um, how those things interface with the world outside themselves. Um, the classic case being, I, you know, I want to have a URL that I can put on an, you know, in a QR code that's slapped on the side of a bus um, that somehow connects someone to an object in this universe. And uh, what does it mean uh, to go from a sturdy ref to a live ref or in the other direction? And, uh, and I think what I took away from the conversation is that, is that the notion of a formula is very much about um, how you, how you go from, from, one of these externalized string-like things um, to a, 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 a live reference to an object that you can directly interact with and how do you reconstruct the world uh, that was referred to by that, uh, by that sturdy ref. And probably Chris, you should pick it up from. 
<laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to 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 the uh, to Chip's first question is like, is this uh, a rotation of names around concepts I am uh, that we're already deeply familiar with from in the OCAP space versus are there any or is this something deeply unfamiliar? And uh, it is a little bit of both, I think. Yeah. Uh, a lot, yeah. a lot of it is certainly no name rotation. Um, so let's let's go through that a little bit. Um, we converged on an equivalence between. Okay. Well, uh, the important terms coming from Chip's mind are sturdy ref, live ref. Um, and then I suppose values in the heap are the third category over there. And then pet names are another thing where pet names exist is a difference in our architectural visions. And it might be incidental. Don't know that yet. We haven't had that conversation. Um, the, the sturdy ref corresponds closely to what we're calling a locator and the locator doesn't exist in our implementation at the moment but it's very clearly communicated that that's some, that the direction we're going we have a thing called an identifier and it's our it's our collective vision that locators are uh uh that the locator will be a url that you could yeah, slap and, on and, and that was also very much at the uh, in my uh my own sort of architectural noodlings i had an entity I labeled an, an, an OCAP URL, um, whose exact form uh, in terms of, you know, scheme and syntax and all of that, we can hand wave our way around uh, for the time being. But the idea was for A, that it is the, the, the manifestation of a sturdy ref and B, that it is in fact a URL of some kind. Yeah. Which, which fits well with the concept of locator because that's what the L in URL stands for. Yeah. Um, so so what are the semantics of a sturdy ref, which is also a locator? It's a string, right? It's a it's a bunch of bytes, which means that it can't it itself does not hold, it doesn't retain anything uh strongly. It retains things weakly, which is which is well, one way of saying that is that that QR code on the side of a bus does not give you or anyone else an obligation to retain the referent. Right. right, because because yeah, garbage collecting the reference graph of sturdy refs is is not a feasible thing. Yeah. So the idea. So I think so. We're basically in agreement that there needs to be a system, some system where sturdy refs are managed by the user, right? And uh, and 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 the user who the user who is obligated obligated either through arrangement with other people or or just for their own interests um retaining the referent and when nobody's interested in the referent it goes away or rather when whomever holds the referent no is no longer uh is no longer interested or uh, obligated by 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 uh, social obligation to retain the thing it it's free to go away um yeah and in the pet demon it, it, it is specifically one of my design hypotheses, which I'm not, not sure has played out to its conclusion sufficiently to be sure that it's a good idea, is that um, when a sturdy ref is unreachable from any of the roots of a particular user, that it not only is free to be collected, but must be collected in a timely fashion, right? Um, it's also a hypothesis that it should be collected in a timely fashion and maybe be made unavailable to anybody who currently has the ability to communicate with it in a timely fashion, right? So it, like my, my hypothesis is that deleting, uh, I, uh, rele releasing a sturdy ref should imply that you nor anyone else can send messages to that object through your pet demon anymore. It I might... I think what you're doing is we're we're drawing a distinction between possessing the sturdy ref in the sense that well there are these bits and you know what the bits are from having made a positive assertion that hey I am holding on to or interested in this particular sturdy ref. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so sturdy ref is that string, the and then there's an API. Well, we'll get back to that. There's an API that the that the the where you can say, hey, I've got this sturdy ref. Can you give me a live ref for the corresponding object? So what's a live ref? A live ref is an implementation detail of CAPTP currently in the pet daemon, but live refs could be an implementation of a more general form of the same thing. And the swing set is a more general form of the same thing. OCAPN obligate the imp OCAPN as a spec obligates you to write a more general version of of CAPTP that more closely resembles the swing set. So so something that I received from the conversation is that the machinery that chip proposes for OCAP kernel that resembles the agoric swing set is solving a problem of uh, the multiplicity of pairwise record keeping between uh, between VATs on one scale and between peers on another, um, there's there's uh, the when you have a click, you know, a star star shaped topology of entities that are connected over CAPTP, each one of the edges is an obligation to keep uh, keep track of the live references that are shared between those two parties. And those and the four tables, like these are my promises, those are your promises, these are my remote objects, those are there's these are your remote objects, and then addressing them appropriately, um, and then addressing them to to the to the node of the, the the vat in which they live, um, and what the swing set lets us do at Agoric, and what OCAPN necessarily must do to 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 have a correct implementation that can do third party handoff is to reduce the pairwise connections within a cluster, chip's word, cluster, um, a, a, a cluster of VATs or a cluster of peers. Um, and the only difference is how they're addressed. Um, where uh, where those tables are consolidated so that you you have some, like there's a, there's a hub that's responsible for keeping track of the discipline of, of, um, uh, of, of, of providing and collecting on uh, lost live refs, the the live ref is uh, a a key like I like I mentioned that, that has a couple has the dimension dimensions of like who owns this where are they um, and then uh, is this mine or yours and uh, is this a promise or a capability um, and that that's that's essentially the the role of the swing set and the swing set itself has some notion of a supervisor. And the pet demon has a notion of a supervisor. We learned from our conversation that these are not the same thing. The supervisor is not the same thing, doesn't exist in the same place, and um, this lives in a different domain. Um, it's just a coincidental adoption of a particular piece of jargon for immediate right. needs. And right. So, so the. Uh, so one way in which the pet demon architecture, the, the pet demon architecture is implied by the prototype and the architecture is implied by Chip's uh, effort to actually set out to have a, 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 an architecture for the OCAP kernel, um, that one way in which they are obviously compatible is that uh, the pet demon, as a matter of expedience, is relying on CAPTP. For all pair to, to establish pairwise communication between a demon and a whole bunch of workers. The demon and workers all fit in the same spot as a VAT in Chip's architecture, or, or, or however that we end up naming them. One of the nodes in a cluster of a live ref, uh, a, a live ref graph. Um yeah, and then the <laughs> I think the notion, the the word you introduced into the conversation a few minutes ago, which we didn't didn't come up yesterday, but I think is still useful, is hub. Hub, yeah, yeah, hub. Mm -hmm. Where the the hub is essentially each each of the vats is talking to the hub, uh, rather than talking to each of the other vats individually, um, um, such so, such that the hub has to maintain. Um, you know, n relationships to n vats, um, 
uh, and each VAT has to maintain one relationship to its hub, uh, as opposed to each VAT having to maintain n relationships to n other VATs, um, um, thus reducing the um, total amount of overall bookkeeping you have from, from n squared to n. This this falls out as being essentially there there uh, the topology falls out to be exactly the same even but but it's incidental in yeah the and the other well the other thing is is that is that the hub is in a position to have with respect to this thing which we've been calling a cluster which I'm not happy with that word but 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 you know wordsmithing is a separate problem um, is that it has an effect. Uh, global knowledge of all of the relationships between all of the VATs. Whereas in the, the case of uh, relationships between peers, i.e. the, the, the hub or the cluster that's in my machine with all of its VATs and the hub or the, or the cluster that's in your machine with all of your VATs, um, um, and then uh, my hub talks to your hub or my kernel talks to your kernel, however we we label label that in terms of terminology. Um, um, in that in that broader network where you just have a graph of things talking to other things over network connections, there is no entity that is in a position to have global knowledge of all of the relationships. And therefore the um, the garbage collection problem becomes much uh, much slipperier, much more difficult. Um, um, whereas mo we're, my expectation, um, certainly absolutely the expectation built into a swing set, but my, my expectation as well for the OCAP kernel is that the, the, the vast majority of the relationships that need to be kept track of the, in terms of objects, uh, uh, the, the object references that cross from one bat to another Will be amongst vats that are all in the same, the same cluster, uh, and fewer with re with respect to vats that are in separate clusters. And then from the from the uh, perspective of the wider distributed uh, connectivity graph we have, you can model uh, all of the vats that are associated with with one cluster as a single thing that just has its pairwise relationship with with its peers and uh, and then that that network will be uh, sparser um, yeah yeah so my 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 working idea is that at the moment these are these are largely compatible architectures that the one nests within the other and the, oh, there are some questions that we did not get to about what durability means and how durability emerges from these different designs and um, that's that's something that we can get into in greater detail but for now the terminology different the, the terminology is that a, that a locator and a sturdy ref are one and the same the sturdy ref in the pet demon um emerges from an object, a sturdy ref manager, Chip calls it. Um, we'll, we'll we'll come back to that. There's a there's a sturdy ref manager, where that has methods that take sturdy refs and can produce new sturdy refs, right? Um, and like evaluate is such a method, and it's an instant. And this is where we get on to talking about pet names. It turns out that. Um, it turns out as an effect of my hypothesis that sturdy refs should be immediately co collected when their ref count drops to zero. Well, that means that a sturdy ref cannot be born with a ref count of zero because it would be immediately destroyed. So that's the reason why all of the pet daemon APIs like Evaluate take pet names and instead of sturdy refs. Um, and more, they could take they could take sturdy refs or pet names, and that's something that we should explore because sturdy refs are uh, like the stur the retent. We we can tease apart some of the concerns about retention and scope for um, or lifetime um, as we go forward, and we've run into some problems with dealing exclusively in terms of pet names through the pet name API. Um, yeah, and I think I think one of the things which distinguishes uh, a pet name 
from a, a sturdy ref, aside from the fact that the pet name is, is a namespace that is scoped to whoever's pet name it is, um, is intentionality, which is the pet name uh, embraces the concept of I am I am deliberately intending to hold onto this reference, i.e. I'm incrementing the reference count. Um, uh, uh, whereas if you just had some some robot somewhere that was holding onto a sturdy ref, just or had a sturdy ref, I should say, um, um, it isn't explicitly part of the the reference counted object graph um, until it takes some affirmative action to uh, make it so, such as, for example, uh, registering the sturdy ref in a pet name table of its own. Yeah. So this this explains why evaluate and make store and all the other methods take a final argument, which is a result pet name, which causes the result to be retained. Right. And at, um, that, and at, at that point, the pet name table, um, there is some notion when one could have some notion of what's the retention policy for um, for this particular act of retention, which um, is not reference counted. It is it is in fact in the world of some policy governing how how you're choosing to hold on to this thing, which might be yeah, it's just my table, and if I delete something from the table, it, it decrements the ref count, and otherwise I'm holding on to it. But you could have alternative schemes where, for example, a certain thing is um, given out on a, a use once basis, whereas you know the first time somebody converts the the sturdy ref to a live ref. Um, that drops the the um, uh, the reference count to zero, or um, something that has a um, an expiration date. Um, so this this one is good for month, um, and all of that happens at the level of you know whoever is explicitly declaring yes, I'm holding on to this thing. At some point, they say no, I'm not holding on to it anymore, and uh, what you know, what causes that state transition is some human meaningful or application specific logic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Aaron has been thinking, or shall I say, Kumavis, I should not use your dead name. My apologies. The, um, the one, um, uh, one of the things that we've been struggling with is this the 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 sturdy refs are weak right uh with so one of the th and and but dealing entirely with pet names is inconvenient when you're writing say a bot for example and a bot you would want to just have locators and and variables and then use those to refer to the things that are in variables instead of having to deal with this other table of non-lexical scoped state um so it's convenient to think of how well what if we had what if we had um some sort of retention store and say hey please please keep track of please hold these these sturdy refs as long as this in memory object persists right and it could have a postmortem finalization of deleting all of the things that is a thing we could do it has and 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 and, so, and it's a good use case to think about like what is the what are the implications for retention does that break my original hypothesis about timely collection and i and it does to a degree right it's like my a lot of my thought is if there isn't um it was is it, maybe it doesn't i don't know it depends on it depends on how you look at it it's, uh, it's very similar to the notion that you get in um in a in an operating system and file system where, um, you know, if rather on good combinations of file system and operating system, not all of them, um, your uh, your kernel can retain an inode for something on disk that isn't reachable from any of the GC roots on the disk, right? If, if it, it's possible for an inode to be, for the, the kernel while it's running to prevent the collection of an inode just by having it in, uh, just by retaining it in the kernel, and then it's the obligation of the of the disk to say no, no, the, the disk controller to just keep that inode laying around, even though it's not reachable from the root of the file system. Um, 
And we could do something similar. We could say, as long as this object in memory exists, which could be until this worker is killed, for example, we'll retain these weak refs and that might make a more ergonomic API for bots. In any case, that that touches on some of that touches on a lot of the issues. So winding it back, we've got a correspondence between locator and sturdy ref. We have a correspondence between live ref and the tables internal to CapTP or its successor, which was and CapT it's CapTP itself was sliced out of swing set in the first place. So there's a, there's a really close close correlation between those things. So like how do we generalize? How do we um, improve upon the CapTP we've got? We know we need to improve upon the CapTP we've got because the CapTP we've got does not do three-party handoff. And in order to do three-party handoff, you basically have to do what Chip proposes to do for clustering, um, except that your cluster keys are are peers. They're they're the um, the the nodes of that particular cluster are keyed by the public p public key that's used for cryptography between nodes, and you know. That's another layer. <laughs> That's perhaps another and, layer. And then coming back to formula. Right. The question is, what is a formula? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what's a formula? So so I mentioned the sturdy ref manager that you can send methods to like store this or like save this, save these bytes or um, save uh, the result of this operation and um, like evaluate it's, it's so the way the way the way that the this sturdy ref manager works is that a method like evaluate a side effect so the primary effect of calling evaluate is that it does an evaluation based off of the instructions given entirely in arguments like i need to get the values for these sturdy refs bind them lexically in the scope of this code execute that code persist that object in memory and then allow and then create a live ref so that you or anyone else can send messages to that object if they have that live ref. Um, the, the next order of effect of it is that it also writes a formula, and a formula is a record of how that thing was constructed, and um, such that if your program is restarted, or um, or if it's uh, or if it's or if the if the live value is disincarnated and, and needs to be reincarnated for some subsequent. Um, attempt to to uh, obtain a live ref for the sturdy ref, the the behavior needed to obtain it is is captured, um, and then this by construction forms out a directed acyclic graph on formulas rooted in the pet names, right? So your pet name retains a sturdy ref. The sturdy refs retain other sturdy refs. Ultimately, you can say, hey, I want a live ref for any of these sturdy refs. And it will go off and rehydrate all of the dependencies and give you the ultimate object. And Chip made the observation that this is basically how um, this is basically how build systems work at scale, especially uh, what was it called? Um, don't don't tell me. I remember uh, it was beautiful. It was Dagwood. Dagwood is the the build system that that Chip worked on at Pay, at PayPal um, for the directed acyclic graph. Uh, and then the rest is it was, it was directed acyclic graph work order object distributor yeah so and formula was, is the work or what work object work, the work, work yeah work order is a thing thing that just says hey you do this thing for me please which could be executed anywhere now and then of course that architecture um is shared by google's blaze and basil and um, has been recap recapitulated many times. The um, another another thing that I mentioned that I thought was helpful. You can uh, riff with me, Chip. Uh, is there's a metaphor between what the what the pet demon does and what Git does, right? Git has refs, refs, which are essentially sturdy refs, um, and like the 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 porcelain for Git. Um, reveals these in various places, but ultimately, like branch names, or are a kind of are 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 analogous to pet names, and branch names and tags are uh, yeah. analogous to pet well, names a, a little bit, except that they're they're globally scoped rather than yeah. local to whoever ho holds them. Right. Of course, I could have I could have a branch which I've created locally that hasn't been pushed. You could think of it actually as a if you think of each 
uh, um, uh, each origin. Each, each origin, yes, I was looking for the word. Each origin as as a um, uh, like a uh, a namespace. Um, then yeah, yeah the, yeah, the branch names are scoped to to the origin. This is this is actually... binding between a, a human readable name and this string of clock. Yeah, it's actually it, it, thinking more about it. It's more appropriate because uh, we also talked about how um, you can create a subdirectory within your primary, within your profile's main pet store, is saying here is a portion that I mean to be managed by somebody else, which is analogous to each of the each of the GC routes you get in Git for all of the origins you retain which get maintained every time you pull from that origin um, and oblige you, as long as you choose to remember that origin, to retain all of the objects that are reachable via the refs of those origin branches. So, yeah. Um, and then importantly, there's an uh, there's, the, there's a ref log. The pet daemon does not currently surface a ref log, but it ought to, right? Like, here are all of the sturdy refs and these are the names, these are the name paths that you have locally that retain them um, so that you can go say, oh, why am I, why am I still keeping this? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Or, right. or find things that you, that you may have lost and give you an, on, on, an option to adopt a name for them. Well, it's interesting because you mentioned inodes earlier and, uh, and that's often a way that people explain how Git works which is a, a branch name is like a, a path name and an inode is a, um, um, you know, the, 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 the reference, you know, hexadecimal blob and uh, it's the, the, you know, it's a hash uh, that's the real identifier of the thing. Um, one of the things that Git does, which is, and and also which 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 Dagwood and similar thing did is the heavy reliance on a content addressable store, um, where you identify, um, um, you know, particular immutable strings of bits by their hash, um, um, and and therefore anyone who provides you with a string of bits which matches that hash hash can be a a point of storage of you, know, you don't care where you got it from as long as the hash matches. It's that 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 is self-validating. Um, and I and I think something like that will have a role here somewhere, but I'm not quite sure I understand it well enough to say what that role is. Yeah. So um, we haven't talked about this, but concretely, what I think I'd like to see happen is for um this re the 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 architecture of recapitulating the system for managing live refs to be the next iteration of captp because we do need that we do need a next iteration of captp that's that's something that i think that chip and i at least both recognize well uh, the, the the thing is is that is that the current when you say that the major thing lacking is three party handoff um I think the 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 current CAPTP, it's sort of how do you put this? It's there in spirit, but not actually there in reality. Um, um, in the sense that um, there's always been an intention of adding it, and I think a kind of generally shared vague sense among the participants as to how that will be done, uh, although obviously nailing down all of the particulars is is um, uh, important. Uh, but we haven't done the engineering work um, to actually do that uh, because every time the subject comes up, the analysis says, well, yeah, we're going to need to do that at some point, but we don't need it today. Um, and there's a question of um, 
is that is that is that analysis always going to be true? In other words, you're always going to have that conclusion of yes, we'll need that someday, someday, but today is not the day. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah, well, I, having having third parties is <laughs> yeah, We've yeah. Well, that that that, that actually that may be um, that may be the, the 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 key addition to the universe is 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 actually having third parties. All right, let's uh, let's go to the mics. Uh, ZB. Yeah, I have a question to something that was one topic ago, uh, which is around garbage collection and uh, where things come from. So my question is, since we have formulas uh, for everything and uh, you could actually start at a pet name and recreate everything that it needs since we have the ability to reconstruct things we need and uh, rehydrate them after a restart. Um, do we really need to care that much about the quality of our garbage collection implementation? Would something probabilistic based on heuristics be okay? So a probabilistic garbage collector would uh, just pick out what to destroy uh, at random based on a given probability score uh, for each element. And the probability score would be something that we come up with heuristically. The easiest heuristic is time. So the probability of something being picked grows with time. And then if it makes a wrong decision, we sometimes have to rehydrate. Is it, what am I missing? Why, uh, tell me why this is not a sufficient solution to have a garbage collector uh, that's not going to disappoint most of the time. I think, so, I, think I, have a, I have a take on that. I don't know if it's correct. Um, when, what is it that, that, that somebody somewhere is retaining the, the formula itself, which is going to take up space. And it's possible that the rehydration will be um, horrifically expensive because it might entail the recapitulation of you know, arbitrary amounts of compute. Um, and so I think one of the things that, that would have to go into such a system is um, some estimate of the cost of, of, of rehydration, which um, in the limit is that cost is infinite and therefore um, it's, it has to be retained no matter what. Um, Sounds like a very good second heuristic to take into account. Yeah, and and we're in a position to measure how much it costed to make it in the first place and that could be recorded. Pretty I'm not sure we are um, because to the extent that, to the extent that uh, getting to whatever state you're in involve the in, in, in the the sort of the end product of the interaction of a bunch of independent entities mm -hmm. um, none of whom knows exactly what it was that the other entity did they just have the end product well um, an interesting thing that we can do that we haven't that we haven't done in the prototype but i think is theoretically sound is that if you capture in a pet name a value that has a pet that is provably pastile copy, the formula that you used to obtain that becomes irrelevant. And then that could go straight into the content address store. And then it's become significantly cheaper to rehydrate. Uh, well, except then there's a question of how long do you retain it in the content address store? Uh, right. As long as long as the as long as the sturdy ref is retained, you would retain the corresponding content in the CAS. So so have we have we basically define things in, in, in a circular fashion, which is um, no retain no. things as long as we need to retain things. And no. how do you know? You, you... No, no, we're just talking about shortening. We're, uh, I, I'm proposing shortening, but, but let, me, let, me, let me clarify. Um, let me add some clarifications to the question. Um, ZB, your solution applies to one layer of garbage collection um but not to all of them mm -hmm. uh, let, let me let me dig into that there uh the formula 
graph is intended to be stored on disk, right? Or in some persistent storage mechanism, right? Um, and we, I've, we've taken some care to ensure that that graph is locally, or pardon, is, is uh, mostly a DAG. There, it's there are uh, there are a couple of exceptions, but they are permissible, yeah. where you end up with multiple sturdy refs to a small group of facets that are that that retain each other, and that is a cycle. But it's relatively straightforward to break and collect, um, because the garbage collector is in a position to know the specialness of these formula types. Um, so what it what it means is that there is one garbage I'm proposing one garbage collector exists for the retention of formulas and 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 by extension all of the all of the content in the content address store and that works like uh the the super user has a has a pet uh, has a table of pet names um the pet names can revert to other directories of pet names which are in our sturdy refs so ultimately, any object that is reachable in the content address store or in the formula store should be retained. That anything in and that that retention graph can be effectively managed with simple ref counting. It's all local. All of the cycles are explainable and transparent to the garbage collector. It can be timely. I I, I posit it must be timely, right? Because the moment something is unreachable, it should become collected. The uh, a consequence of collection is that we talk about the next layer up. So we've got pet names. We talked about sturdy refs. Sturdy refs have a garbage collector. Um, there is based off of that. There is post mortem finalization of the formulas. That can be observed one layer up. Let's talk about that. Then there's the live refs. <laughs> um, and the live refs are are managed by um there oh maybe no, there's maybe even a layer above that. There's there is another memo. The pet demon, the pet demon, the demon.js has a store that memoizes the correspondence of sturdy ref to what could be called a phylactery, please? <laughs> I remember looking the word up when when you first used it, and I don't even remember what it was. A phylactery is an artifact that a oh, okay. So in Dungeons and Dragons, and and okay, adjacent so, lore, uh, we could we could go earlier than that. I know we can. I have no desire to visit <laughs> to, to visit the lore that predates D and D. <laughs> um, it, let's just say it's an artifact that that contains a soul. Um, and the uh, the uh, and 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 thereby can be used to reincarnate the. Uh, the 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 car the the incarnate uh vessel of the soul um and that's why i think it's a great name we should definitely not use but yeah there's a uh it, we should be we are already that we already have a great deal of talk about car incarnations yeah, right the theological the, implications are severe <laughs> yes being garbage collected is, is frightening <laughs> well, I mean, this is these are not devices. Horcruxes are not used by, or phylacteries, if you will, are not used by protagonists. <laughs> the um, yeah, phylacteries in general are sometimes used by protagonists if you go to the base lore. Anyhow, the um, the uh, uh, the in any case, there are incarnations for a sturdy ref. You incarnate the sturdy ref to create a value, and that value would be reached via a live ref from another vat anywhere. The anywhere it's reachable anyway. The um and and with that comes the implication that it might be 
collected at some point, you know, when you restart, it might dis that that incarnation will disappear at least when you restart the process. And then next time you rehydrate that formula, you're going to get a new incarnation of, of that same, uh, of that formula. Um, the, uh, so, so, and, and so on that basis, it's now, it's also possible in the pet demon to say, Hey, I want to disincarnate or cancel the live ref for this particular sturdy ref, which keeps the sturdy ref around. It does not, it has no implications for the GC of sturdy refs. It does have implications for GC of live refs. Um, and GC of live refs in the demon, it's not, it isn't even GC. It's just like destroy this subgraph. And then next time it's needed, we will rememoize it. Um, and, uh, and and this is important and also part of the more questionable part of my hypothesis that you can revoke access to the live references of uh, corresponding to a sturdy ref as a consequence of the sturdy ref being collected. Um, yet to be seen. Um, I'm not sure I buy that. I mean, you could do that, but I'm not sure you want that um, because my model of the world is there's a vastly larger number of live refs than there are sturdy refs. Um, and so most of the live refs that are floating around are in the form of ephemeral uh, objects, which are just you know being used instrumentally in the course of doing something else. And um, um, uh, whether or not they have had a, a sturdy ref bound to them is kind of not part of their life cycle. Um, they do need to be revocable um, because we always have the possibility that a particular machine running a particular vat could, you know, crash and die and explode and never be recoverable. And so we have to be prepared for the potential eventuality of a, a live ref getting severed and everybody who's holding onto it has to be prepared to cope with its loss. Um, but whether there is a manual operation that says, I wish to deliberately sever this thing, bang, shoot it in the head is um, a separate question. Yeah. Okay. I see. Um, okay. So coming back to, uh, to ZB's arch arch architectural idea, um, I, uh, the garbage collection within swing set or its successor within the OCAP kernel of live references is a separate problem. And that, that separate problem can largely be solved with finalization registry. Um, and finalization registry and 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 also some amount of um traversing the uh, the internal reference graph for live reps in the in the cluster and i don't have any points to make about that all i know is that cap tp as written is insufficient until you close the connection when you close when you close a cap tp connection all of the all of the references are collectible um all of the live refs stop retaining the reference um and that's a and that's useful that's useful if, if you're if you're if if you if you want to have a, an instrument of last resort for collecting those objects but um we can do better the but yeah your question pertained more to the sturdy ref like the how the demon like which your your uh, your your the solution you propose is a is a solution in search of the problem of heap growth within the demon itself, in that memoization memoization table of um, key to corresponding live value. Um, yeah, I was even considering setting a static uh, size that we want to maintain and allow 
uh, memory to grow up to this size, size mm -hmm. and only trigger uh, garbage collection whenever it would start running out of room in the predefined size and yeah. everything else would be kept retained forever uh, as long as you don't collect more things. Yeah, it, what you're proposing is not a garbage collector so much as it is that it's a cache, right? It's a cache and then what... Yeah. And it, a consequence of evicting a member of the the you know whatever policy cache is that uh that the referent has to be that that the referent has to be disincarnated mm -hmm. and yeah that's solid we could do that okay thomas um i have to go so I yeah i just post i just posted my question uh in the chat it was just about sturdy ref snapping and swing set but then i came across this uh three-party handoff discussion i'm not sure uh this seems like it's a pretty good reference point is that uh a good assumption to make mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah there's yeah michael started a conversation about three-party handoff the uh yeah, they talk. They talk about nonce locator. It looks like too, and mm -hmm. just yeah, yeah, different. Yeah, yeah nonce uh, locator aspect. Of, you know. Right, and 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 it's our hope. It's my hope that we converge with OCAP and with uh, both the concrete implication and the impl and the implication comp the concrete implementation of OCAP and for communicating on the wire, which is which implies a um, which implies architecting a cap tp Im implementation in the way that chip is proposing um it it implies a bunch of other things too like um it implies that you have to have like our cap tp doesn't have a finalization registry yet at all we need to have a finalization registry uh, in order to get rid of the ephemeral things that are not retained by the tables uh, or, or rather the 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 four tables in whatever live live ref manager we implement need to hold the reference weekly so that uh and and when they uh, and when they go when they are gc it needs to emit notifications to peers saying hey i don't need this live ref anymore you can collect it from your side as well that won't that won't solve gc cycles over the network but it'll at least be you know it'll it'll minimize the damage of of leak um, but an implication of having those tables in an OCAPN network is that final is that the um, that when an object is in flight between two pairs of peers, like A is connected to B, B is connected to C, A is sending an object to C through B, um, that that process requires the referent to remain. Uh, retained not because it's needed for the A to B table but because it's needed in the A to C table and it hasn't been realized on C yet um, so my understanding is that the uh, a that we need a cluster based approach for um, managing m multiple pairwise connections between OCAPN peers because the because the the core the the GC core for um for OCAP and needs to be aware of all live refs across all pairwise connections and also needs to be able to um, observe disconnection so that it can clean up its tables. Okay, that was helpful. Uh, at first, I thought, uh oh. Yeah, at first, you know, it might right. be where we're at. Uh, but no, that really was all right. If I was to uh, like learn more about just the garbage collection process, uh, yeah, any good resources, uh, because I know erights.org, uh, but yeah, stuff. I guess I'm more specifically focused on swing set as opposed to OCAPN. Um, and so yeah. Do you, have, do you have specific questions? Because I can probably, I might be able to point you at, at specific things to look at, or are you just kind of vaguely trying to understand the whole 
shebang. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm vaguely trying to I, I'm right now kicking off uh, my journey to understanding the whole shebang okay. because uh, you mentioned the final finalization registry, but swing set has that correct. Well, Swing Set makes use of the JavaScript finalization registry, but the, 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 um, the, the, well, two things. One is Swing Set does not currently deal with um, effectively garbage collecting um, uh, uh, cyclic references that cross VAT boundaries, and that is a weakness in uh, in the implementation. Um, which has proven to be less important in practice because in practice uh, we found that um, uh, cycles are relatively uncommon. Although in fact, there were a bunch that got introduced accidentally then there had to be a big extra work to go back and undo them. Uh, but um, uh, if you if you just, think in terms of reference counting, um, the things that can qualify as a reference, um, there are different kinds of things that can qualify as a reference. And we, we, we think of an object as being, um, there's this sort of tripod of things that can support the continued existence of an object. One being an, a, a, an, a reference which is, uh, exported from a VAT, meaning some other VAT somewhere is, is holding on to that, that reference. And there's, you know, at the point where they drop that reference, we need to learn about that and then decrement the ref count. Um, the second is a reference which is held in the state of a durable, or I should say a virtual, a, a, an object whose, whose state is stored on disk. Um, we, and then finally, um, there is the live in memory state um, uh, that's actually held by a, a JavaScript object in memory. And, uh, and we use JavaScript's finalization registry uh, a, a mechanism to allow us to, to notice when the last in memory, in memory reference to a thing has, has dropped. Um, meaning one leg of the tripod has disappeared, but you have to have all three legs of the tripod disappear before you can actually um, you can actually uh, say this object is garbage and can be it can be reaped. Um, and uh, um, it's a little tricky because if if you can have um, a, a reference which was exported and like the only thing you know about anybody holding on to it is some other VAT is holding on to this. And then that VAT later on sends you a message that contains that referent as, as one of its parameters or in, you know, somewhere in its, in its parameter data. Um, and now suddenly you have created a new in-memory uh, representation of the thing. And now your in-memory count goes up and you need to be able to reassociate them such that, that what you get back is literally the same same object. Um, and um, uh, uh, you can have something which is no longer resident in memory, but it's on disk and it's and it's referenced externally. And so there's a bunch of hair associated with that. There's also the there's also the problem of um, a reference being in the state where uh, I think Brian's terminology was um, the difference between reachable and recognizable where reachable means you can you can you you, you can send a message to that object um, uh, recognizable means perhaps you have used that object as a key in a in a weak set or a weak map and um, so you don't have the ability to to actually do anything with the object, but you still have to, in some sense, retain something because if that reference comes in and is used as a key to look up something in that table, you have to be able to get to uh, that entry. And so the weak table cannot drop um, uh, that, that uh, key value association the way a weak table would if the, if the thing were truly um, 
uh, truly unreachable. Um, and that's that introduces a whole other set of hair. Um, anyway. You know, yeah, that, that, that was really, uh, really informative. Uh, and, okay. and, I mean, and, and, and the thing it is, didn't, is it, it, didn't, it didn't scare me away. At okay, all. good. Because this is a rabbit hole that you can go down and spend a lot of time in. Um, and uh, if you really want to understand that, I recommend that you do so, but you should do it with your eyes open. <laughs> Because it's uh, and, yeah. okay, okay, and uh, uh, by do it with your eyes open, you mean yes, yeah. meaning, 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 as long as you know that that, that you're in for a, a, a you know, uh, quite a thrill ride of, of 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 complex stuff, and you've you've accepted that in your heart, um, then then you're, you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Thank you. Uh, I uh, I appreciate the. Uh, the uh warning for lack of a better term <laughs> um but uh, uh i think just working you know working with the Igor sdk for as long as i have over the past uh, couple you know years. I, might, I'm, I might be able to help you out with um because i wrote a cap tp like 10 or so years ago that was like this was my educational experience was uh like tr like reading all of the base material and trying to know enough of it to make the like the simplest possible implementation of a cap tp which still exists i can send you a link to that that'd be great uh, uh and chip one thing in the beginning you mentioned the three different scenarios of like uh forget it one was durably held uh can you durably remind me held. Of what Held by um, held, held by held externally and held in memory. Okay, um, and so the processes, are, are, yeah, the 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 garbage collection process differs depending on which type, which bucket that falls into. Or well, is it you a have, mix? Well, it's a mix. And the thing is, is you have okay. three different mechanisms, that each of which is designed to detect the presence or absence of a particular kind of reference. Um, um, and all three of them have to have to have to have to get to have to reach a, a conclusion that, well, there's no reference here in order for you to actually say there's no reference and therefore the, the object is garbage. Um, um, okay. But the 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 handshaking you have to do with a with an with a, a reference uh, uh, holder who is external to your VAT is a bunch of handshaking between your VAT and the other VAT or between your VAT and the kernel. Actually, um, the handshaking and, and then and then what you have to do to keep track of a uh, a reference that's in. Um, uh, a, a durably stored object on disk is um, uh, different because at that point you 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 need to be tracking when uh, the state the properties of a durable object or the state of a durable table is modified um, then that can um, increment or decrement various ref counts and 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 you have to do that. And then finally, the in-memory stuff, which is the easiest because you're essentially outsourcing, keeping track of that to the JavaScript engine, um, uh, which no doubt has a very complicated implementation, but 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 we pretend it just works. So so in I summary, work. I think that the best way to get up to speed is to implement OCAPN on a weekend. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So also, well, following, I mean, following it sounds, of that sounds reasonable. Yeah, following some of the stuff that Christine did in uh, in her exploration of Mark's stuff that was on eWrites to to implement Sprightly um, um, may also provide some um, illumination there. I'm not familiar with the the what's what has been written there and uh, or with the um, the code that implements Sprightly at all, but I know it exists and I know it it, it emerged from her exploring the stuff that that mark had written saying hey i, I can implement this and you know, going off and doing it and then and then you know all of the different lessons that got learned in the course of doing that yeah so that, and... that might be another another source of insight into yeah. the conceptual space 
And and yes, okay. Kim Holland, uh wrote up an implementer guide for OCAP and which yeah, okay, very good. Is, okay, and, and you think that, that would so as somebody who is uh yeah focused pretty much entirely on endo on the Gork SDK swing set and endo, uh like the endo demon or daemon, uh you still recommend so this is still a good uh, a reference to uh, read through to get a, a grasp of the entire of those systems. To be my Sorry. to be clear, my recommendation is that you turn around and flee while you still can. But... No, <laughs> never. <laughs> I just but, it, 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 but, the fun is just getting started. But if you can't bring yourself to do that, then yeah, write it. Write one implement a cap tp doesn't have to be a standard one just make one of your own design even um yeah yeah i i learned a lot about this uh uh god i don't even want to uh, back in the 1900s um when i implemented essentially all of this uh for mark as the distributed stuff that's in the elib library in Java for the original E language, and uh, um, and that was a and 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 that was written over the course of a like a week, um, and it was education from a fire hose. But yeah, I learned a lot. I've forgotten most of it, but I learned a lot. No, yeah, I mean, uh, well, that these this is all really good insight. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing uh, which yeah, was really yeah, helpful yeah. in doing that, by the way, and I'm not sure what the current present day analog of this is, but um, that education involved a lot of, hey, Mark, I'm confused about this. And then having some extensive conversation with Mark where he would explain it to me over and over again to the point where it eventually it sunk in. Um, um, and so, um, um, you know, Time, time consuming. Actually, asking asking people who've been there before questions is probably not a bad thing to do. Uh, although, in my experience is that is that a, a lot of the the deep deep understanding is a kind of uh, ephemeral nature that it tends to evaporate from one's brain if you're not actively working with it. So, um, um, you may ask a lot of us questions, and then we'll be like, oh, "How did that work?" Yeah, you know, but yeah. for what it's worth, that's, no. that's another thing. That's, that's why it's, that's why it's a team effort, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and what and, and the end product of this will be, if you are successful, um, uh, is that you will end up being one of the one of the cohort of people that people come to when they say, huh, "How does this work?" And you'll say, "Well, I don't remember. It was something like." Yeah, the conversation. Or, or, I, or I say, I think I remember Chris. Uh, I think you remember Chris uh, talking about this. He's the expert on this. Let me relay, relay them your way. Or, oh, you know, man. I think Chip has, oh, Chip has no, it. No, there's, I'm there's joking. No, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm joking. There's uh, no such thing as three party handoff. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's also <laughs> worth uh, mentioning that just I'm kind of full bore on Agoric smart contract development too, uh, with just getting this one basic contract out the door and live uh on mainnet three so uh yeah that's to say that uh, my, 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 my recollection is in, in e we did do three-party handoff and it wasn't actually that hard but it was subtle um 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 uh, and, and another possible resource, I don't know if it's available, is the, 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 this is the story uh, Dean tells about the validation, the formal validation of the three-party handoff logic from Midori that they did at Microsoft, um, which which involved the use of a thing that's called, I think it was called PCHS, which is some kind of formal analysis tool um, that that was able to enumerate all of the possible interleavings in which all of the different operations could happen. Uh, um, and, 
TLA. And it was some gargantuan number, like 1.8 billion possible interleavings, you know, and it discovered that the implementation was flawed in like six of them, um, um, which is both both amazing and terrifying. Um, and 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 I don't know if any of any of that was ever written up, um, but it is if it has been, um, uh, it might be that there are useful references there. Um, I don't I don't I, I'm I'm very fuzzy on the particulars of that. Dean would know more, um, <laughs> assuming Dean had any time to answer questions. Um, cool. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. I'm just kind of blathering it open ended. Uh, don't, don't take it too serious. No, uh, this is again, this is really appreciated, uh, useful, great uh, insert adjective um, uh, or compliment. Uh, uh, Chris, I think the whole uh, implementing cap TP is a re is a really good. Uh, pet project you know um and so yeah I'll, I'll let you guys know how everything there fares and in the meantime <clears throat> again just getting the agoric build process for for deploying contracts uh can get quite a bit messy and uh yeah as you guys I'm sure are aware and so, yeah, that's really why I wasn't on these meetings for a, a little bit. But uh, the last three, four weeks, I seemed to have gotten past it. Uh, Chris, I think you saw the issue with the Noble Hashes library, like how it was exporting code. Um, I mean, it's crazy that it's still going on right now and I'm still trying to deploy the account, you know? Or the contract's just getting deployed now, and I'm just able to write stress tests. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, hopefully I'm, this I'm is... I'm going to have to drop off. Uh, I've got a cat that's going berserk. He, he's supposed to get fed his... Well, well, thank we you. have these cats who are on a weight loss diet, and they're supposed to get these regular feedings. And um, we have this one very fat cat who's extremely food obsessed. And so if he misses his feeding... It, he starts to get increasingly berserk. So I have to go deal with that. So catch y'all later. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I won't keep you long here, uh, Chris, at all, too. I just wanted to mention the Noble Hashes thing. And yeah, just where I'm at, I guess, which yeah. is getting the contract tested and uh yeah i mean deploying it there's sort of some confusion there i'm not sure how close you are to that but there's a roll-up approach and there's the agoric run approach and that's just kind of confusing uh, uh because you might like i'm trying to figure out why is this breaking and i'm trying everything and anything and then you know come to learn that, oh, these are two totally different build processes, you know? Um, and yeah, funny enough too, Noble Hash has upgraded a version, which seemed to have fixed everything. Mm -hmm. After that, like three, four weeks of hell, yeah. Yes. This was just uh, last week. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, and we've had to upgrade our tooling as well to accommodate the that. Yeah, it's um the ecosystem is struggling to converge. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, yeah. And the I, whole, I, yeah. I'm, go on, go on. I'm I'm I am in the loop on this. Um there's uh there's a lot, there are a lot of things that we can do. Um, just trying to knock them out one at a time. The uh, ultimately, ultimately the process that you're using to deploy contracts on, on a Gork's chain right now is temporary. 
<laughs> the, uh, the the whole mainnet two process uh, with Corey Val and proposals is is intended to be temporary, and the um, our hope is in the long run that we'll adopt a mainnet three style deployment model, which will look a lot well. I believe that when it's done, it will look a whole lot like uh, what we're talking about with the pet daemon here, where there's an a, where there's a user interface that resembles chat, where you have your pet names, which correspond pretty closely to um, the, the 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 stuff in the permits JSON that you see um, in the mainnet two. Yeah, I I. I mean, I know I've been away for a while, but I I, I agree with that. I, I think that that's I think I think it'd be awesome if that was the case. But from toying with Dan Connolly's one little uh, uh, not one little, but just a demo he wrote up where he was querying data from like from the LCD, uh, yeah, from the light client, you know, using uh, the endo daemon. That was really, you know, one of those minor uh, demos that makes you, it was like my head exploded, you know? And yeah. so saw the power there. And, um, okay, yeah, cool. Because I was just thinking of more of general abstractions to making things easier for developers, for deploying. Um, mm -hmm. For deploying contracts, which I guess they're not usually exclusive, right? The endo demon and those type of extract yeah abstractions. Yeah, yeah. The uh yeah, the well, in any case, that's a that's a topic for that's a, a, a topic another. for another day. But the uh like there are a lot of incremental refinements we can do on the mainnet two process as well. The and we've done some of them. I mean, I, you've you've noticed that the latest noble hashes works. <laughs> was it? Yeah, a lot, a lot of this is engagement with the ecosystem to patch over the 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 rough spots and um, ecosystem support. It's uh one one of I think that yeah the the noble hashes issue. I think boiled down to something that is very endo. Um, endo relevant, and that was uh, support for. Um, it was at the common JS ESM boundary, which is a huge mess. Like as we as we march one foot at a time into the future, ideally there's only one JavaScript module system that is internally coherent, but ESM the ECMAScript module system, the one that you're probably most familiar with. Um, isn't there isn't just one coherent idea about how it maps to common JS. So the ecosystem, like all of the libraries in the ecosystem are coding to certain assumptions about how it's going to be consumed. And those assumptions are valid only if you're using specific bundling tools um, and and like in some cases, recent bundling tools versus old bundling tools and that kind of thing. Um, uh, and how you express ESM so that it works on node and also on the web and also with bundlers. All of these details are create this gigantic mess of compatibility problems. The specific one for noble hashes is that noble hashes was written in TypeScript, not JavaScript. And then compiled down to not ECMAScript modules, but to common JS modules. So the TypeScript more closely resembles ESM, but the build product is is a legacy format, essentially. I hate saying that. So it, it 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 spits out an ESM directory uh in addition to like just spitting out all the javascript files uh or it did noble hashes oh mm -hmm. uh, uh it was and i was so you're saying that uh if was, if you were to the problem, use the problem was with the common js variant and uh a lot of 
and it is possible that they fix the problem in their package json i i don't know there are there are newer tricks that you have to do in package json in order to make sure that if you are trying to consume as ESM, you get the ESM implementation and not the CAGS implementation. Okay, yeah, that could have been it. Uh, just because I, I just quickly ran the build on Noble Hashes 1.4, uh, which was the one that was giving us trouble. And it does, so yeah, it, it uh, creates all the files just in the top level directory, which is kind of weird. Um, but then it creates that yeah, the ESM directory and uh, which with JavaScript files that um, I guess uh, use ECMAScript modules, right? But are you saying that if I imported those, I would have been better off because I was importing I so what I ended up doing was just real quick, uh, compiling it, adding it to like a vendor folder in my project, and just copying it over. And but then I wasn't using the ESM. Uh, I wasn't using the ESM. Uh, the file was from ESM. I was using the top level ones, uh, and I did get it to work. Uh, it did take a bit of patching, um, and yeah, uh, I guess not, I don't know if patching is the correct word, but yeah, modified. during the, yeah. yeah, modifications during the deployment process. Um, but yeah, it worked. So, and this, and this was, uh, I learned something here. So yeah, it's this. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of a lot of irreducible complexity, so, uh, or rather, there's a lot of irreducible complexity. It's not irreducible. It is reducible if you write all of your own code. <laughs> it's relying on dependencies is where you get in trouble, <laughs> and and yeah, mm -hmm. and the dependencies have to play along with your tools, not necessarily the tools that the dependency author was using in the first place. Um, so your problems aren't yeah. even necessarily visible to the people who are generating the code that you're using. That's that's no, also definitely. true with hardened JavaScript, since almost nobody is writing their library intentionally to be usable with hardened JavaScript. So there are edge cases that they come up. It, 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 it seemed like noble hashes, though, if any library was to, you know, uh, uh, work well with Endo, noble hashes has no external dependencies, you know, relies on no external dependencies. So I thought, oh, for sure, you know, this isn't going to yeah, be too shoo. much. Yeah. yeah, it's a shoe and it's a shoe and it haunted me. Um, but hey, uh, again, I, I, remember, I got through it. Yeah, I don't remember the specific issue, but I believe this was the thing with Big Num um, and their decimal wrapper. Uh, and, you know, the... Yeah, another part of this is that there are a lot of like a lot of libraries have to assume the lowest common denominator, and by doing so, they bring in a whole bunch of bloat, and that's causing a whole bunch of contract bloat issues that we have to work work around. We have tools to mitigate these problems now, though. That's that's the good news. There's conditional exports. Um, uh, on the endo side, we need to implement. Uh, wildcard subpath imports and exports, but and we haven't done that yet. But uh, you know, okay, yeah. Ways. So in in the endo package, right? There's it just. Uh, um, I, I'm going to say the package is wrong, but there's packages within endo.js, right, that deal with this very problem, mm -hmm. that help mitigate this very problem. Cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, I. Yeah, uh, I was on the cusp. I mean, it was gonna it was gonna be my first time really diving in trying to apply. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, work in endo and TLDR. Uh, thanks for the confirmation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, are, there are sort of yeah two main. There are two main. Um, 
categories of packages within Endo. Like some of them are about, uh, at, at the core, there's Ceph for the hardened JavaScript shim. And then on top of that, there are, uh, there's like some of the packages in Endo are about the distributed object model. And that's all like pass style, CAPTP patterns, interface guards, and all that stuff. Um, and then the other side of it is bundling, packaging, and execution in a confined environment. And that's where compartment mapper, import bundle, bundle source, um, check bundle, um, some of those tools all fit in. Yeah, that's what I was pulling in. I guess I was so worn down that I thought, all right, we're going over to the end of JS because like literally the last day when I finally got everything to work, I had check bundle. I had just added a check bundle. I thought, all right, we have to get to the bottom of this. And uh, yeah, as it usually works out, that it just, it fixed itself automagically, which yeah. we don't love. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. all right. Well, yeah, you know, good, you've got, good, you got a lot. Shoot me an email if you run into a, or poke, uh, po point me at an issue or at me on an issue when you run into, run into, run into more of these difficulties that the, bun the bundling system is my wheelhouse. Okay, cool. I really appreciate that. Thank you for everything. And it was nice catching up after a while. I oh, I should know. One of the things that I did in response to that problem actually is um, I made it possible to use our bundler instead of roll up. Um, it's a, uh, worth an experiment maybe uh, our bun uh, you can now use bundle source in place of roll up in some cases um on um, yeah inquire within we'll get in touch in any case okay, that was okay. Endo right. <laughs> yeah yeah tune back next awesome. time for more on presumably chip chip and i'll probably talk about um durability in the pet demon next time and that's yeah, I'm a fan of durability. All right. All right. Talk to you soon.